bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, like, my whole thing about this, the way they are trying to pump this, everybody got to carry a gun thing is the answer isn't more guns. People already aren't necessarily rational actors um, in the, at the best of times. And then just throw a gun into a person's hand who get pissed off about somebody cutting them off. You know what I mean? Uh, and all it does is leads to another circle of violence. And then if you shoot my cousin, I know a couple, uh, no, I'm probably not guaranteed that I won't come after you for shooting my cousin either. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Chris Rock did have an idea. He said, make every bullet like $5,000. <laughs> he said, man, I'll shoot you right now if I can afford it. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I'll look at it like this. Yes, I think there should be more. We should, like, you should have to go through background checks and all that, but I guess I'm looking at it for more like a, it is like, not more so what I want, what I hope, but more so what do we have right now to just try to make the best of the worst of, the worst of it. So, granted, it's like, given how a lot of states now are removing the um, the state, well, for Maryland anyway, you know, the state police can't just deny you because they feel like it. Like the good and substantial reason clause has been taken away, which in my opinion is a good thing. And here's why though, because when you, well, we already know the state, the state police are already going through issues with racism anyway. And Maryland is, let's be fair, like half of the state supported the Confederacy half of the state supported the union, but both were... One guy running for the state's attorney is a neo-fascist, so... Pretty much. <laughs> so. And the other guy who's trying to run for state senator right now is was so like a Trump supporter, and I I don't think he was at the insurrection, but he supported it, and he's a... Like, it's weird. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the point is, on one hand, you know, I'd rather... Every, look, if we're going to say nobody can carry, then nobody should carry. That's my whole standpoint. Scrap the whole good and substantial reason. Scrap all of it. Nobody should be allowed to carry if nobody can carry. You can't be so, well, these people get to carry because they need a reason. Well, what's the reason? And then it's up to the state police to decide if they think it's a good and substantial reason. Like, there was a prosecutor who literally had documented death threats against him. And when he applied, they told him no. Because you don't have a good enough reason. Like, he's literally works for the state as a prosecutor. He is prosecuting criminals who can easily go and find his, his name and address and all this other stuff because he's a public servant and that's public information. Like, if anybody, he should, he has a good and substantial reason. So if he gets denied, everybody needs to get denied then. But I do agree. I'm not saying more guns will make the situation better. Absolutely not. But we got to live with the, you know, the times we're in. So better to for our people to assume that you have the same capability to commit violence against them than them to assume I have to one up on you. Well, it's not perfect by any means. I, yeah, I, I mean, I believe in gun restrictions. Like I said, you know, I've, I've said it before. Um, I, 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 I think I think I think people should have a whole night, a whole neuropsychological battery before they can have a gun. Because just looking for people who were um, convicted of, of violent crime and stuff like that doesn't happen. Because a lot of the people who get away with this stuff has, have never been in the system before. But if you give people a whole neuropsychological battery way where they have to show that they are mentally competent and they have a substantial IQ level, then I think that will catch more more potential nutballs than than just you know, running, running their record to see if, if they have priors. I mean, I, I mean, I agree to something like this. Dude. The thing about it is, is that when this also, like you, you go back to the police thing, uh, where you talk about, well, especially in the black community, just, it just gives police reasons to shoot. I think, you know, it's, you know, it's already, you know, paper thin now, you know, you can look at a police officer wrong and they automatically be like, you know, he was threatening my life. And so now that you put it into a situation where um, definitely everybody's allowed to carry and everybody's allowed to have a gun, that's all they need to say is that person got a gun, plant more guns on people, more access to guns to, 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 to things like that for, for those crooked uh, 
uh, uh, police officers. So, it, it, like, a lot of times, I think everybody looks at, like, oh, yeah, I got a gun, therefore, I am, I, I feel safer because people are going to be less likely to mess with me, and that's not the case. It's just shown that you're more likely to shoot one of your people, your own people, somebody's not doing anything, and 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 conflict escalates always when you have a weapon. Well, that's why open carry is bad because it in, it it invites it invites, the it invi yeah, it invites, it invites that challenge. challenge. Yeah. So that's what I said. Concealed carry is not as bad. And that's why I was talking about with the the recent video Icy Mike made on Hard to Hurt. Uh, you know, open carry versus gray man because he you know he he argued well that open carry is just a form of violence. And even if you don't agree, it's like you're only doing it because you know you're intimidating people to, to prevent them from wanting to attack you. At the same time, it also invites the challenge for, for others. And you make yourself look like a big asshole to a lot of folks who don't want to be around others holding guns. So, I mean, that's fair. I mean, like I said, he, he and, had a... Oh, go ahead, sir. I'm, oh, my bad. But and then on the other end, the, the so-called gray man... The dude who wants to wear tactical gear, walking around, you know, in his everyday, his everyday situation, just looks like a jackass because he he, he looks like a, a narc, <laughs> like walking around with the tactical khakis with the with the pockets for the <laughs> for all the guns and and knives and stuff like that with the with the typical cop, you know, um, glasses. You know what I'm talking about? The one, the, little, the little wraparounds, and just looking like a. a like a douchebag, so I don't think either one of those are are viable alternatives. Like I said, concealed carry fits that that midway point where you are able to carry, but you're not intimidating to others, and it'll only become an issue if you actually have to pull it out to def to defend yourself. defend yourself potentially. Well, the issue is, and I do agree with you saying, like it does open the doorway for police to abuse that. You know, given especially now they already abuse it anyway, so it does create that leeway. But however, I would argue that not everybody's going to be able to conceal carry, and, at least in Maryland. And here's why: to do it, one, you have to be able to afford the class. Yep. Like, how many people honestly have three fifty or four hundred bucks to take a class for two days? And that's just the class. So you have to take two eight-hour classes, one on Saturday. Well, two days in a row. Put it like that. You got to take one in the classroom where you learn the laws. Then you got to take another one where you have to actually have to go to the range and shoot. That can go to up to three fifty. Not only that, you have to buy a HQL, which is a license to even buy a handgun, and that can easily go to another two hundred. So you have six hundred dollars right now, and that's a four hour class. And you have to get fingerprints, so that's another sixty dollars. So you're almost at seven hundred. And you have to pay a fee to the state police. That's another $65 for the application. So in hindsight, you're going to be spending around $800 before you can even be allowed to buy and carry your firearm. And you still got to wait 90 days for it to be processed because they got to do a background check. Hold on. What I'm going to do with my Jordans, though? I need to I need to get my new Jordans, the new the new ones with the, with the color from, from, his, uh, from his trading card. That's going to cut down into my funds. Yeah, that's, not, that's not necessarily what people would think. But, I, I'm joking. But, you know, I also look at the fact that you do give more access to bad people with guns. I mean, one of the major ways that, you know, that lawbreakers get guns is they steal it from good people. Well, I, I hear that, but my thing is, anytime you're talking about weapons or fighting or self-defense, there's never, I don't think there's, there's always a trade-off. There's never a thing where you where you can only ensure that only the right people get access to one to something. I know. When you know, whenever you give access to something potentially for the right reasons, there's always going to be bad actors you're, you're who, right, who abuse right. that. Now, and then, but my, you and, still want to limit that. Excuse me. I apologize. No, okay, you're good. So no, and then the other thing is, let's just look at it from a historical perspective. Whether we talking about gun control or gun rights, neither have ever ever worked out for black people. And when it when it when it comes to gun control, then you have like stop and frisk, and then when you have gun rights, when a guy when when a black person, you know, particularly a black man, is carrying one legally, he'll still get shot for it. So it's like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, Even if you're doing everything I, I, I by still, the book, I still feel as though you still grant more access 
to being able to get a hold of a gun um, when you allow more people to carry. Because if you look at the situation, like, I mean, just from a practical situation, if I have, there are people who ought to always say, you know, I keep my gun at my house. Someone broke into my house. They don't report the gun stolen. It, it gets, it gets, it gets, it gets pulled out there. Or they get into a situation, somebody gets to jump on them, take, take their money and the gun with them. You, you know, so I it, it, you, but it, in both of those cases, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. No, go ahead and finish. No, okay. but I'm just looking at I'm just looking at the situation of that being able to have more chances and more access to it could le leads to more. It's the same. I mean, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people aren't necessarily purchasing AR-15s and just like I'm going out here to shoot everybody I see. But I well, see a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that because they have more access to the gun that these more that means the bad actors have more access to it too. and then those incidents go up it's an uptick in numbers that's I, true so I, it's I, always a trade-off i mean i get that however i mean the argument most people mm -hmm. most people who are committing crimes with guns aren't going to a gun store to buy it because if you go to a store to, if you go to a gun store to buy a gun it's it they have to trap that right that's, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. That's my point exactly. But I hear you, but let me finish. Right. Yes, you do have some people who, when their gun is stolen, they don't report it. That is true. You do have a small minority of people do that. But for the most part, criminals aren't legally buying guns. They're not going somewhere to buy their firearm where it has to be registered. Mm -hmm. They're buying the gun off the street. And if we go by where we were in Maryland, for a prime example, they're buying it from cops. <laughs> so, damn. They're buying guns that police have took off the street, and they're just selling it back to the street. The cops are? Yes, that the gun the gun trace task force. Yeah, that's that's what they were doing, dude. They would they would lock up people. They would take guns out of the evidence like a lot of people up for them, and turn right back around and sell them to the street. That's why you have people wow. who have five who get caught with guns that have like five six bodies on them because the gun has been circulated so many goddamn times. But that's my point. And so I, I'm not saying I do agree. Like yeah. But those things can happen, but if we can really look at the guns that are used to commit these crimes, they're not assault rifles. They're handguns. Right. But I'm just, I'm just, I just use assault rifles. As no, as but I'm not. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it because that's another good point I'm gonna touch on. When we talk about gun violence, you know, we tend to. There, I will argue, you have. There are more people who get killed by mass shootings nowadays than individual situations. Unfortunately. Right. I'm not saying one is bad, one is better than the other. But. Let me explain to you again, because I want to make sure that I'm hearing what you're saying correctly. Explain what you mean. What I mean is, so let's say when we have, if we take the number of mass shootings we have in the U.S. versus the, the incidents of shootings which are like one-on-one, -on -one, which means like me and you have an issue and I shoot you, versus mass shootings, the mass shootings outnumber those incidents. I mean, okay, so the definition of a mass shooting is... Uh, is and if, I'm being loose in, with that. Huh? I'm being loose with that. I will throw like a Like three or more, right? Because like, yeah, it depends, on the, it depends on the state, because some states are going to try to up the number to three. Some say how many in a certain amount of time. It's weird. Okay. But let's, let's, well, let's go with three or more. Okay. So, like, I don't know. I see a lot more individual shootings like that. It's just that we're, we're, I think everybody like to key in on the assault weapons and the reason being is that because you can kill much more than just even with a simple handgun right and then the, the the way that the assault rifles are designed they're designed to be more accurate than than a handgun right i always you know like i'm like i'm not totally against guns like i you know my favorite thing to tell people is if you want a gun to protect yourself get a shotgun you know, you're, that's, you're going to be pretty much accurate, and 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 which the realm that where most conflicts usually happen, the shotguns are the most effective, right? But people will always tend to go, well, like you know, let me get a handgun. You're more likely you're going to miss, or the bullet will go through out the window, smack somebody walking across the street that had nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. You know what I mean? And I, I, that's always been my standpoint. Shotguns are the best guns for self-defense. Right. Okay, even even. Uncle Joe said it. Yeah. 
So like, <laughs> so my so my my thing is that people are oftentimes, oh, well, we got to get an AR-15 because somehow I've made a lot of mistakes in my life and I need a gun that will kill 30 people in 30 seconds. Or you could just go, you know, to the um, to the range and learn how to use your weapon correctly. Or just go to the military. But, but even then, the, the a lot of people don't even times, no, matter, no matter how much you use your, you, you practice doing your your weapon correctly. Like your worst of times, you well, you, you will never be at your at your best in a conflict. You know what I mean? Always expect to be at your at your worst performance in a conflict because you got your drilling going. You got you know what I mean? The, there are too many moving objects. Well, you perform how you train, so yeah. it's, it's just it's just like with with school, like you perform on your quiz and exam how you study. Like if you if, if, if you if you study while watching Judge Mathis and blasting, you know, blasting some drill music, like you probably not gonna perform too well. I'm, in I'm exam. looking at, but I, you know, you get what I'm saying. Like, but, um, but I'm looking at police officers. I'm looking at people who've been in some, even some people who've been in the military. And when they get that adrenaline going, they didn't even realize that they just shot somebody, uh, shot somebody five times when they only meant to do it once. I mean, yeah, I've, I've said it in a previous video that I did. Like, even when you talk about well-trained people in the military, like, when they, they're actually in a war, they're ducking and shooting just like, you know, people would on the street because... Nobody wants to get shot. No one wants, nobody wants to get right. shot. And that's so. because they're adrenaline. That's because your life is on the line, right? So you, you're, you, you're, and whenever you're pulling the trigger on somebody, you're not just like, it's very rare that you find somebody like, I'm perfectly calm and collected, and I'm going out here, and I'm going to hit this mark every time. Well, the people, Unless it's pre people, people who score high in, in, in being antisocial probably won't perform that way, but for the majority of people, no. Yeah. <laughs> so that leads to more... More, it leads to more deaths. It leads, and, and then going back to the, the more the more that good good guys have access to a gun, the more access that bad guys have to. I know, and and, that, and that's what I was saying like a moment ago. So there's always going to be a trade off, but I guess you have to weigh. You, I mean, you have. I guess you have to make that that you have to make that moral calculus. Does the does the benefits of putting putting weapons. You know, access to weapons in the right hands outweigh the potential detriment of putting weapons into into the hand into the hands of bad people. I mean, that's you gotta do that sort of calculus. If if it doesn't, if it if it leads to more people getting shot, I don't think that's a that's a good trade off. Good or well, bad. I, well, I mean, depending on who's getting shot, like I that's mean, what I'm saying. Because the thing about it is, again, because you know, nobody again retaliation. That's the next. That's the next. That's the that's the next out of service. Well, that that that. Regardless well, that of, goes regardless into on how, that, like, let me put it to you like this, right? Regardless on how how the society feels about my my cousin or my people doing whatever, I love them. And so you shoot them, them doing whatever, still makes me want to come back and get you. You see what you see the mindset? Yeah. And it leads to more deaths and because it's the same way it just it completes the circle of death to go on so revenge killings are a thing but well, let's get into consequentialism i mean so we can only base it on like you know foreseeable outcomes i mean it's and, and like and like so i said we gotta make a calculus based on foreseeable outcomes we we just can't see it. all the we can't see all the relevant outcomes that may play out but so I go on. Okay, would this would this be a you know a benefit to society in the long run or a detriment to society in the long run? And like I said, I'm to me, I'm, I'm, I'm ambivalent on it because, like I said, as far as we talking about the black community, like I said, neither gun control nor gun rights have ever benefited us really. So I, I don't know. But to me, like I said, it's all foreseeable. It's all added more deaths. All I see is adding more guns is adding more deaths, regardless on however you shake that tree, no matter what. But I mean, but, but I mean, if I can pr protect myself and my family from Pookie and Ray Ray, then hey. <laughs> Not just even Pookie and Ray Ray. From Bob, Javier, Ahmed, <laughs> Chan, everybody. Like, it, 
But I mean, well, I, here's my stance on it. Like I said, I, I, I like going to the range. It's fun. I have nothing against guns. I personally feel as though we should do like into the Badlands. Get rid of all guns, and the and you have and the only way you you can defend yourself, you gotta know how to throw hands, or you know how to use a sword or a knife or something. Well, that, all all. But well, that takes out of that takes away most of Baltimore then. Cause they I, I'm hands. I'm okay with it. But <laughs> that's fine. But at the end, I mean, the only way to solve all this is when we had to go back to feudal times where you got a sword, I got a sword. What you finish? How you want this to play out? <laughs> You about to see my tiger style. <laughs> right, that, but I think that's the only way to solve the gun problem is we get rid of all guns in society and how well, I mean, yeah, we can do like we can do like some countries and just outright ban like Yeah, the police don't have guns, citizens don't have guns. You better know how to fight. That's why Japan is so safe. Like the 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 uh, prime minister who who got uh killed by a guy having a gun, he made that himself. Well, I was gonna touch on that next. The second problem is now is, you know, you have people with 3D printers who are just printing their own guns. So that's the second, that's a, the second part of that is, you know, not saying, not, not saying criminals are doing that because if you can afford a 3D printer, which even though they're cheap, yeah, me, if you can, if you can rent it for 200, less. I know, but I'm saying they're, but you still gonna have to get the schematics and the materials and all that. That's so, free on the internet. And, and that's, the materials aren't free. The schematics but they, are. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is, if you have the money and the resources to do all that, all it's are, you're not gonna go out here, you're not here committing these crimes because you have other things to do. No, I, I beg to differ. I, I, I think that's probably one of the cheapest ways that you can easily get a firearm. Now, a working firearm, I mean, if you know what you're doing, that's something else. But, like, or you but, can buy the gun kits off of things like eBay now. Yeah, so. yeah. Like getting the getting like but I'm saying most people are doing material it. is actually quite cheap. It is, but I'm saying most people who aren't like again in most cases they're not doing that. They're just going to the well in some states they're going to the store buying a rifle and going on mass um, deletions. I want you to get demonetized. Yeah. They're going on mass deletions. Most of the people who are doing one-off deletions, they're getting they're just buying. The, the item off the street. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you have master criminals who are 3D printing guns because that's not what's going on. And even people who were saying, you know, I, they were 3D, 3D printing these items or buying the kits off eBay and stuff, they're not the people who are going doing who are going out doing these crimes because all that stuff can be tracked. Like it's literally, I can go on your computer and see that you looked up where the and look at what you bought. eBay keeps track of what you buy. I can see what sites you visited. Like, so a lot of the people who are doing this the right way, they're not hiding it. They actually have paperwork and documentation to show you, hey, this is what I'm doing. And they're showing you I'm not doing nothing illegal. It's the people, if anything, the people I'm more concerned about owning firearms are the ones who are fighting against background checks. FYI, guys, um, nothing... Nothing you deleted off your computer is is fully deleted. There's always a trace left on there. Just, just unless saying. you really know what you're doing, and most people don't. And most people don't. We're yeah. not we're not talking about people with computer engineers and stuff like that. We talking about the people trying to clear clear their <laughs> clear their, their cache and and browser history. And browser history so people won't see that they were looking at anti midget midget lesbian three titted porn. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my point, like. <laughs> You know, the, the, the most people who are law, they're not trying to hide it. If anything, I would be cautious, again, because of the people who are fighting against background checks because responsible gun owners will tell you. Oh, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, they want more background checks. Actually, yeah, right. on both sides of the aisle, 93% of Americans are like, yo. The NRA used to actually advocate for that. We want more ago. background checks. Like, that's on both sides. Gun owners, non-gun owners, Republicans, Democrats, everything in between. Everybody is basically saying, do more background checks. Everybody. You have a small slither of conservatives who are against it. Those are the people you should worry about. And my thing was, I, like I was saying um, a moment ago, is I think we should do more than background checks because they don't catch everyone. It only catches people who've already slipped up. The majority of people that end up getting away with mass shootings and stuff are people who've never been ran through the system, so they don't have a background to uncover, which is why I think 
maybe we should give neurological, I mean, neuropsychological assessments to people before they, they, they're able to assess guns. True. I mean, well, with the background chat, it comes with, they, 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 that's what they want to include in the background chat. Oh, okay. well, I mean, oh, okay. If, if it includes that, then I'm fine. Yeah, like even even um like even in Merlin, when before you try to go get a concealed carry, they're gonna ask you. You know, they ask, they're gonna check to see have you been admitted to any hospitals. You know, they're gonna they can, of course they can't open your file to see why. Well, that's but, why I was saying but they, they, they do, should give a they should they give a, 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 they they should give a psychological battery for people who want to, you know. Yeah, I mean they, they do ask you know have you been admitted? Now you can lie, but it's not that hard to. Do a, um to get a warrant or you know that's what I'm saying they could give a, a, a cheap psychological battery just make them take a, a MMPI uh, three which is a you know an assessment for like mental disorders and a quick like 15 minute IQ test those two things alone will be able to discriminate a lot of potential bad actors. We made it back. We did. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. <laughs> Me.